What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my 2016 roadblock end of the line predictions. Uh, whether or not we have a roadblock in 2017, I don't know. This is the second one this year, although last time was a house show in Canada, if I recall correctly. Anyway, uh, I have my predictions right here, so let me know yours down in the comments, and let's get this train a moving as Duhop would say. So our kickoff match and the kickoff show is Big Cass versus Rusev. There's been an ongoing thing with Hotels and Enzo, and they haven't really had, you know, an actual match interaction here between Big Cass and Rusev, so that could be compelling. It could be interesting, uh, and I'm hoping it's good. In terms of who wins that match, though, I think the smart money there is big cast. I don't see any reason why a guy they want to push eventually into the main event scene uh, that they would not have him win here. I'm not sure what losing to Rusev uh, would do for him here, and I don't think honestly it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt Rusev that much. Certainly, I would expect some Enzo and Lana shenanigans at ringside, but perhaps they get thrown out, and then we get a one-on-one, -on -one, and then obviously big cast is seven feet tall, and you can't teach that. Speaking of big dudes, we have Braun Strowman. Braun! Taking on Sami Zayn, but the match stipulation is it is a 10 minute time limit match. So, I would imagine that match is going to go to almost 10 minutes, if not just at the buzzer, because that's where you get the drama and the tension when you have a time limit match. So, that match might end up being a draw. I can't think of the last time we actually had a match end in a time limit draw in a WWE ring that is such a product of a bygone era. I am so pleased to see it brought back because you could certainly work the drama around that time limit. So I think a draw for that match. Now, after that time limit hits, anything could happen. But I think Sammy goes the distance but does not get the pinfall. And I'm not sure how they're going to handle it, if it's just going to be a no contest or if it's like, alright, well you lasted 10 minutes, now win the match. If they're going to do it the old way, I think that would be preferable to have that match uh, that way. Moving on from the big guys to Superman Punch, the little guys. We have the Cruiserweight division. It is a triple threat match. It is your champion, Rich Swan versus TJ Perkins versus the... Brian Kendrick, the man with a plan. And I don't think anything changes here. I think Rich Swan retains this title. Um, I would imagine that a lot of this has been built on 205 Live, and I don't have time to watch 205 Live, so I'm perhaps missing some of the finer details of this feud. But I think you just put the belt on Rich Swan, so what would be the point of taking it off him uh, on this show? And traditionally, end of the year, you just spin your wheels until the beginning of new things in 2017 when you start building toward the Royal Rumble. Also, is... are none of the guys in this division going to be in the Rumble? Do they get their own Rumble? Like, what's going on there? Um, anyway, yes. Rich Swan retains this belt, and uh, I would imagine most of that division uh, is doing their thing on 205 Live every Tuesday night after SmackDown, only on the, you know, the idea. Anyway, moving on, we have Chris Jericho versus Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, and there's a spear to Kevin Owens. Uh, now, this certainly has gotten a lot of build in the past several weeks, although it is always a weird thing. Like, the way that things get built now when you have your brand pay-per-views and then you also have your, you know, main both brands on a pay-per-view... It feels like these builds have been going on longer than they, they should have, these, these, these feuds. So, this one, I think, with Chris Jericho being on a month-to-month -month contract at the moment, and he's got more stuff with Fozzie coming up. Like, I would have liked to see a proper split for Owens and Jericho, and then have that feud, and then send off Jericho to go do his music stuff. That would have that been nice, but uh, I'm not sure if they have enough time for that before he actually, you know, just takes a breather, and pieces the fuck out. So, uh, I think that certainly, when you have this path that you have Rollins on, 
to eventually get to Triple H, most likely at WrestleMania, then you have him go over Chris Jericho here. I don't see any need. Like, it's not going to hurt Jericho. At this stage in his career, no loss is going to hurt Jericho because he's so freaking over. Anyway, um, doing the Randy Orton there. Uh, we have your tag team champions who have officially, officially broken the record set by Demolition. That's what you get for joining that concussion lawsuit, Demolition. Uh, they've officially broken the record and therefore now, finally, Sami Zayn, what the fuck? We have a viable, I mean, yes, Sami Zayn and Owens, that makes sense when this game was made, but not for this match. Um, dirty pin. We have a viable, uh, meaningful way to finally have uh, the New Day lose their tag team titles. You knew they weren't going to lose it before that record was broken because they wanted to have that record broken for reasons. But now, all bets are off. So my prediction, my perhaps bold prediction, is that they just... What the fuck? AJ Styles, what is going... You're a SmackDown guy! What is happening here? Holy shit. This match is crazy. Um, this match makes no sense. SmackDown is, is, is invading. They're invading. Uh, this roadblock pay-per-view. And there's your spear. Uh, I am baffled. I am... What is... What is happening? The fuck is even happening? Oh, I'm, I'm distracted here. Yeah, so, my bold, perhaps not bold prediction is that Cesaro and Sheamus get their due diligence and win those tag titles. Because uh, if you don't pull the trigger soon, man, just fucking give it to them. Seriously. They deserve it. They're busting their asses. And New Day's been champion for a long time. And yeah, it's the end of the year. You usually spin your wheels, but come on. Just throw us a bone. Give us something. Um, but we'll see. That one, I think, could go either way. And uh, I'll be very curious as to how, how it turns out on Sunday night. So moving on, we have a 30-minute women's Iron Man match for the Raw Women's Championship uh, between Sasha Banks and Charlotte. And because this match has multiple pinfalls, uh, I think it, you, you could certainly break the cycle here. And that cycle being, hey, Sasha wins the belt on uh, Raw, and, sh and Charlotte w wins the belt on pay-per-views. But, because you've got that multiple pinfall thing in there, I think that they will finally have Sasha retain her belt on a pay-per-view situation against Charlotte. And whether or not we can finally move past that for at least a little while and have her feud with somebody else, that would be nice. Where the fuck's Emelina? Just saying. Um, so yeah, I'm officially saying that yes, Sasha retains or her women's title. Uh, should be a hell of a match with some fun pinfalls and whatever else. That brings us to this match. The main event, which won't go down like this video game is predicting. It's not going to have interference with Sami Zayn and AJ Styles, I'm pretty sure. Um, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship on Raw. And man, what a damn waste that Owens' reign as Universal Champion has been. Now, we know it was supposed to be Finn Balor, and then he unfortunately got hurt the night he won the damn belt. At, what was that, SummerSlam? Yeah, SummerSlam. Um, pop up power bomb. Boom. Rope break. Rope break. Two. No, he wanted clean. How about, how about that? So they turn Kevin Owens from this dominant tough guy into their usual chicken shit heel champion, which is, they, they love that particular stereotype. Uh, and I guess it works, I guess it makes money, but it just makes your champion look weak. And just, the, all the wins that he's had as champion have not looked great in particular. Um, certainly he's still fantastic on the mic, in the ring, but just the booking around it has not looked, uh, that great. And it was the same thing when they had Seth, Seth Rollins as a champ for a while there, when he was the man. Roman Reigns is the guy. 
even though the big dog was in the big dog house for hitting, getting hit for wellness for a bit there, they brought him back, immediately threw him into the mid-card for the U.S. belt, and he's been having this run as the U.S. champion, and that's fine, but the word on the streets is they want to have Roman have the two belts, much like Conor McGregor does in UFC, for whatever fucking reason, I don't know. Um, I just, I can't picture a reality where Roman Reigns loses here. Certainly, they could have spent all this time teasing the Chris Jericho-Owens breakup, and then be like, fooled you! But how many times can you do that and still have it mean something? So... The other reality is, what else do you do here? Like, what other direction do you go here? Uh, I think, in some ways, it's more beneficial for the belt itself to have Roman win it, even though a lot of the crowds hate him, uh, but the company likes him. They want him to be the guy. So, uh, I don't see any reason why he would lose this match. And it's telling that when you have the Universal Champion versus the U.S. Champion, the only belt on the line here is the Universal Belt. So it's, it's not a belt-for-belt belt situation. You're not going to have both belts on, on the line. It's only one belt. So Kevin Owens has everything to lose and nothing to gain from this match. So, I don't know. They're, they're going to put over... They're going to put over their guy, the guy, Roman Reigns. Uh, I don't see any reason to have Owens... Uh, retain his belt here. Unfortunately, I wish they had booked him as a better, stronger heel champion, um, and that's just not the case in current day WWE. Anyway, those are my roadblock end of the line predictions. Last pay per view event of the year. Be back next year for the Royal Rumble, one of my favorite events of the year. Uh, and honestly, with this whole brand split, actually makes it more interesting. Because finally, like, the past couple of years have been so fucking predictable. And now at least, it's like, alright, well you got two brands. So you're not sure who's going to win it because you don't know what, what belt they're going to challenge for. And that could allow people to jump, you know, brands or whatever. There could be a lot of fun wrinkles uh, in how they handle that Royal Rumble match. Anyway, I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. And I'll see you next time, right here on this channel. And I'm out!